Footwork for ground strokes. Jim Verdick, great, great tennis coach, the late, great Jim Verdick. He used to use music. It was actually music from Saturday Night Fever. And he would have kids do a dance step, and he would just yell, hop, skip, step. Beforehand and backhand, it would look like this. Hop, skip, step. Hop, skip, step. Hop, skip, step. Hop, skip, step. With footwork, if you hit the ball deep, it's not like you have to run to the ball. If you hit short, you have to run to the ball. Say, for example, you hit a ground stroke around the service line. You've got to turn and you've got to pump your arms because you've got to run. When my right elbow goes back, my left hip goes forward in this position. And then you get there and then you set the racket. But if a ball is just hit down the middle of the court, you can actually just use a few small shuffling steps this way. When you hit a ground stroke, coming back to the word shuffle, be careful to tell a kid, hit, and then shuffle back. We call it clicking. In slow motion, when you watch someone who's shuffling, it looks like this. They take their first shuffle step, and they're in the same spot. That doesn't mean that you never shuffle. It's actually a great exercise to just have players strengthen their legs. When a ball's hit right down the middle of the court, it can just be a matter of a few shuffling steps. When you hit, many times you're going to hit, and then you have to actually just run right through the shot. I find that so many uh, players today are told when they hit to bring their back foot through. But keep in mind the body's the leader. So goes the body, so goes the racket. When you hit, you want to be in a position where you're using the ground as a stabilizer, ground reaction force. For example, a lot of kids think this is an open stance forehand where they go like this. Okay, we call that no forehand. Does that mean that you're in a situation where you never do that? No, sometimes you have to improvise. You're in a defensive position and you just have to rebuild the point and this foot will swing out. We call it sliding or skating. When you hit with an open stance, the further the feet are apart, the better in this position. So this would be an open stance. Semi-open. You're going to have a square stance. You're going to have a closed stance. When you have that closed stance, you're going to want, you want to adjust your back foot so your hips are not locked. So if the back foot does adjust, many times you'll adjust in this position. Now in recovering, look at this for a second with players hitting. And if they're on balance and they can recover this way, step one, step two, they're going back to the center. If you hit cross court, you only have to go back to this side of the hash mark to bisect the potential angle of their return. With footwork, anytime you tell a kid that the, the better um, you move, the smaller steps you're going to take in the beginning. It's like an ice skater taking off or a, a sprinter coming out of the block. So it's a lot of small little steps. That's where skip roping is such a great exercise. So again, on a forehand ground stroke, you don't want to hit and then pull this way intentionally. But if you hit and then your balance takes you that way, you don't want to come back here, then you're in the same spot. You want to come back in this position. You don't want to turn forward for ground strokes. You don't want to turn and run this way because then the player will pick up on that and they'll hit behind you. They'll wrong foot you. So small little steps. You split step. After every hit, you come back and you want to organize yourself so you're in a position where the racket's centered and you can take off accordingly. You want to be in a position after you hit ground strokes where you can now look to go forward. Typically, and I think of Margaret Court saying when she came back from childbirth, she'd come back and she would walk the plank. She found it very difficult to get back into moving in, in diagonally because she was out having too many light, easy hits, and she said she got into a bad habit of just moving across the baseline this way. Shortest distance from A to B is a straight line. Most of the time what you want to do is move like there's a giant letter V in front of you and you're going to go off in this direction to hit a ground stroke. If you were to think of hitting a ground stroke where you're playing the ball on the rise or you're playing the ball up high. Ideally you don't want to play the ball high. If you're playing the ball from up here you want to go high to higher. But when the ball bounces, when the ball bounces this is how high it is right here. The ball is court level. 
What makes the ball bounce high once again is trajectory. So you're going to read that. And then you want to move accordingly and you want to try to play the ball within your strike zone. You want to play it within your largest body part. You want to play it at waist, hip to waist level in this position. Hi. Now, coming back to footwork. If it's right down the middle, it can be just hop, skip, step. If it's off to the side, you have to pump your arms. You're going to run first, get there, get set, and then realign the racket in this position. So there's footwork to the ball, and then there's recovery from. Footwork recovery from the ground stroke. So when you recover, ideally what you want to do is it'd be step one, step two in that position. That's, that's really if you're in control of the rally, control your balance, you're in this position, you actually just fall back to the center and then cross over. Because what you're trying to do is reduce the number of steps. When a kid is shuffling, and again, I hear coaches say that all the time, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. When you shuffle, you're taking more steps. When you can cross over, you take half the steps, so you reduce the distance. You cut the, you cut the distance in half, and then you're saving time. Once again, go out and film your player, just film their feet. And you want to have a player that's constantly moving. They're not going to be flat-footed in this position. Okay, those are a few, uh, a few comments on footwork for ground strokes.